Hey, good morning everyone from Carolina Weather Authority. I'm meteorologist Joshua Nagelberg with the latest here on the tropics. And uh, let's get right to it. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And um, this will allow us to present to you guys through YouTube some live streams and uh, more videos as well. Um, we're excited about the growth we've seen here and uh, maybe not quite as excited about what's gone on in the Carolinas this season, but we still have plenty of time uh, for more to talk to you guys about. And uh, check us out at carolinawxauthority.com. We have a models page, a mobile app, weather alerts straight to your phone. And, of course, an article that I posted last night, which I'm going to get into more detail with you guys, um, about at least some potential that we think they'll be for our first major hurricane of the Atlantic season. Uh, right now, we do have uh, an area that we're watching for development in the next few days. It's uh, midway between Africa and the Lesser Antilles. Um, it looks like uh, if it does become our next storm, it's probably not going to be a long-lived, long-track storm. There's a little bit too much unfavorable weather waiting in its way, but could become a tropical storm. The next one on the list would be Josephine. And a look at this system uh, shows a, a little more organization in the um, infrared view right now. We've got thunderstorms that have been sustained. Um, but out ahead of it, um, some drier air and some wind shear we're going to be watching. Uh, the rest of the Gulf, the Caribbean, the western and northern Atlantic are quiet. But behind this system, more to watch. We've got another disturbance, which I'm going to show you here, um, which came off of Africa yesterday. And then another area we're watching, which is um, not super organized, but we think um, these two might be the sacrificial lamb for this one by the time it comes offshore here um, towards the middle and second part of this week. And a lot of thunderstorm activity, which will kind of wane during the day and ramp back up at night, kind of a diurnal phase, twice a day, that is. And uh, something we definitely need to watch, which will emerge off the coast in a few more days. Uh, now, currently, um, in tropicaltibbets.com, uh, we do um, see in the Pacific Hurricane Alita, Category 1, not a threat to land at this point. Um, but on the Atlantic side, we are watching this wave, which could become our next depression, number 11, and then Josephine. Uh, right now, not super organized. Models are, in the most part, taking the system uh, near the Virgin Islands and then kind of turning it to the right. There's nothing that tracks it um, at this point um, towards Florida or the southeast, uh, more of a recurve if it survives. And um, intensity forecasts for this are not super impressive at this point, but some development, maybe in 36 hours or so, to a tropical storm. Um, and then it's going to be fighting for its life later this week. And for the most part, our models... Uh, keep it weak, um, you know, one or two exceptions, of course, and we'll have to see about that. Um, but um, that's definitely something we'll watch. And the Ensemble Prediction Center, um, all over the place with this, several tracks recurving well east of the southeast, um, several recurving probably in a few days, and the average kind of takes it east of Bermuda. So we'll watch it. There's a lot of uncertainty at this point, um, and definitely not very favorable intensity forecasts up to here. But I guess something does come up here. It could be in a better spot to develop. Uh, showed you that. Um, and here now is our tropical cyclone genesis probability, a chance that something develops into a tropical system, showing a 92% chance from the GFS and UK met. Uh, this was yesterday's deratio, so we'll ignore it at this point. Behind it, nothing at this point expected to develop, but that could change. Um, we'll look at the precipitable water to see how much moisture is available for it. And all the good moisture is up in here across the northern Gulf or the far southwest Caribbean, also over the western Atlantic. A lot of dry air coming down in this direction um, is going to be something that this system will have to fight, and it's going to continue to push westward. A lot of African Saharan dust and dry air coming down from the eastern Atlantic. Um, but there is a window once this moves by for more development behind it, and I'll get into why. Our El Nino index does show that we're negative. That's a La Nina watch, and it's dropping. So we, as we see this number drop off more, we start to see a more favorable um potential for rising air in the Atlantic Basin. We're not there quite yet, but we're heading in that direction. Um, a look at the Madden-Julian oscillation forecast. This is a kind of a phase um, where we see right now unfavorable, um, unfavorable um, potential for um, several tropical systems to develop, um, but some trending in our direction for more favorable rising air over the Atlantic Basin. It's uh, starting to get better in the Pacific side, and then next week the Pacific could be very busy, and then give it another week in the Atlantic could be very busy. That's what we're looking at. Um, and this also kind of shows that as well. The, um, the warmer colors are um, sinking air, but we've got storms forming in the Pacific despite this. And then over the next few weeks, we see a trend towards rising air in the Atlantic Basin and what could be a very active period for us in the Atlantic Basin. 
Uh, precipitation forecast, Tropical Tidbits, thank you again, um, shows us um, definitely a ramp up in precipitation over the Caribbean and Southwest Atlantic. It will also be wet in the Southeast US, by the way, and up into the Mid-Atlantic states and Pennsylvania um, next week. And then the following week, staying wet in this area. And this is when we look for potential tropical trouble with a lot of tropical moisture over the Gulf, the Caribbean, and the Western Atlantic. So some very busy weather certainly um, looks possible, and even into the beginning of September as well. Now, uh, we, we showed you uh, potential tracks of Josephine on the European Ensemble prediction, and a lot of them kind of starting to kill it off in here. The next wave may organize, but nothing too involved. But the one behind it, um, a lot of Ensemble members are developing fairly quickly out of the gate by 30 west into a hurricane, and then a few of them have a major hurricane out in here if it does survive. And I'm going to get more into that. The Global Ensemble Prediction System um, also shows, um, you know, kind of shows you um, several solutions here. Of course, it's ensemble members, um, but definitely um, something we're keeping an eye on in here um, across the Southwest Atlantic. And if it were to hold together, it could potentially impact the Southeast um, at the very end of August, or maybe if it's a little slower, the beginning of September. So definitely with this high shifting east, um, also, by the way, we're going to be watching the northern Caribbean and into the western and central Gulf um, towards the end of August. If you uh, remember 2005 season, this is when Katrina developed quickly in this area. Not saying that's going to happen in this case, but we see some parallels to it at the very least. Um, this is a look at um, you know model spread again. This system that we're watching could be Josephine and most of the models taking it now north of Puerto Rico. The one behind it not really expected to develop because this one's in the way. The one behind that, though, um, we're showing development farther north and east where the air is very dry right now, but is expected to moisten. And um, that looks to be in this zone in here in about 10 days and 15 days in here. And if you time that out another 20 days, potentially off the southeast coast, but very well also potentially a recurving system. That will depend on what happens with the high pressure system in the northern Atlantic. So something definitely to watch. And by the way, this is um, from weathermaps.org, um, just a potential of how strong things can get if they do form, and uh, definitely major hurricane potential in the western Atlantic, especially north of the Bahamas. Uh, also, the Gulf of Mexico, especially the northern and eastern Gulf, are prime. And if you saw our forecast from a couple days ago, we showed you this area in here and this area in here to be um, target zones for potential hurricanes over the rest of the year. Um, look at the uh, surface, sea surface temperatures, and they are warming across this area, which also does not help us. Um, just a, tr a general trend of warming. You know, it did cool off after Isaias in here, but that should warm back up. And overall, we're still well above average off the East Coast and across the northern and eastern Gulf, and above average across much of the rest of the Atlantic Basin. And uh, finally, I'll show you guys wind shear. And uh, the reds indicate stronger than average wind shear. This is this week, but next week, Slowly, we see that trend start to drop off, and then towards the end of the month, wind shear lessens below average in our favored zones in this area here, um, heading into the beginning of September. So a lot of ingredients are there for uh, what looks to be a very busy stretch of tropical weather starting in about 10 days. All right, everyone, thanks for joining me. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for the latest content, and we will keep you posted. Have a great week, and be safe.